Hey, welcome to the Workforce Connection. The Workforce Connection is a co-production of the Fall River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Fall River Community Media, and Bristol Community College. Every month on the Workforce Connection, we bring to you the people and the stories that influence the workforce and also area employers. My name is Rob Mellion. I'm the CEO of the Fall River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And this month, we are going to address, and in a sense, readdress, because we took up this issue uh, about a year ago, and we're actually in our third season of the Workforce Connection, but we took up this issue before about healthcare and the developing industry of healthcare in the, air, in the area here. But now we're going to take it from a different approach and we have a different guest to discuss the issue. We have with us today the CEO of Health First, Julie Allman, and we also have with us the Director of Corporate Services at Bristol Community College, Rob Vitello. Thank you both for being on the show Thank today. You. So I think before we d address the issue of health care, maybe we introduce Health First. And who better than the CEO of Health First? Well, thanks. Julie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do at Health First and the services that are provided through Health First? Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, let me talk, to, talk about our mission. The mission of Health First, and it's been our mission for 44 years, is to provide quality, compassionate health care to everyone in the greater Fall River community, regardless of income, regardless of age, regardless of gender, and regardless of um, ethnicity. Um, and we're proud of that mission. And it's our mission that drives our daily operations. So at Health First, we provide uh, quality medical care, dental services. We have a um, state-recognized WIC program on site we have a complex care management program that actually brings services to the home setting. Um, we have a dental outreach program that provides dental services to children in the school setting, the daycare setting, and the preschool setting. And we're very proud of all those services. And you have a nice home, too. Uh, we have a really beautiful home that we've lived in now for three years, yes. thanks to the federal government. Yes. And what is the framework of your workforce? Who makes up the workforce at Health First? Yes, well, first of all, we have a uh, wonderfully engaged governing board. Um, I report directly to them. I have eight directors who report to me, and they oversee the uh, 100 strong employees that work at Health First. And so our operations are divided, I shouldn't say divided because it's kind of a tough word, but um, we have financial operations, clinical operations, interpreting services and community initiatives. I mentioned the WIC program that's on site. Um, what am I missing? There are just so many um, programs. And you have a number in of physicians of that work through Health First as Actually, well. I'm very happy to say that um, we have more physicians and nurse practitioners now than we ever had before, and we have more dentists and hygienists than we've had in our history, too. Um, and they're all wonderful, caring, compassionate people. And this is what's interesting to us here on the show, mm -hmm. is the resiliency of the healthcare industry during the recession and what I'm curious about is your impressions at Health First on uh, how you have navigated through mm -hmm. the recession. Um, when it comes to a downturn in the economy, um, no one's immune. Um, and for us, um, it's probably a time when people need us most because when people aren't earning a wage or have no benefits, um, they can become depressed, turn to substance abuse, and that's when I think that they need the care and compassion of uh, quality providers most. And so, um, so we continue our mission. Um, we help everyone that we can, including the homeless, and um, we're very proud. Now, moving back to the, <coughs> the workforce, hmm. We stated this on a past show, but I think it's good to hear from a CEO's perspective. Mm -hmm. How is the healthcare industry today more than just being a nurse? Well, first of all, I have to say that being a nurse is a lot. Uh, but um, healthcare is no different than any other business. And so, um, you know, we have 
accountants, we have billing services, we have uh, someone who helps people with their insurance assistance, we have dentists and medical assistants, and so um, we run the gamut of positions, um, just like any other business, at Health First. What are some of the core competencies that you seek in candidates for employment? Uh, most of our clinical staff are at least licensed by the state. Um, in our physicians, obviously, they have to be board certified, particularly in family medicine. We have a, a new physician who's certified in both family medicine and geriatric medicine because the senior population is very much of interest to us. Um, our dentists um, all are licensed, certified, and um, provide quality care as well. Rob, I know you're here. No and, problem. Oh, I'm, I'm reeling you in now. So <laughs> what are some of the basic training uh, offerings at Bristol Community College that help somebody who wants to enter the health services field uh, get that first step into employment? Well, sure. Um, we at the Workforce Center focus most of our uh, training resources on the non-credit programs. So we have a uh, CNA program that runs uh, in all three locations that BCC has, uh, Taunton, Fall River, down our Duval Street facility, and over in New Bedford at the eHealth uh, building. So those are running constantly throughout the year. It's a very rigorous 126-hour program, and that does uh, really provide an entry level uh, uh, for many people who are looking to then go into other training for phlebot phlebotomy, I can I never say that, um, as well as medical assistant, uh, and we also have medical interpreting. So once you have some degree and some credentials, being able to serve as an advocate and knowing the language, whether it's Spanish, uh, Portuguese, and being able to support people um, through their health care. Um, the medical interpreting is a very intensive class too that will result in a certification. So those are some of the, the entry level uh, means for which people can get into. And then of course we have a very well respected nursing program um, where, which is very challenging and um, uh, tough to get into. So we have small co so small cohort every year that there's a lot of competition to get in. Now, you're Director of Corporate Services at Bristol Community College, and one of the things that you do, and do it well, by the way, is work with the Workforce Training Fund Grant Program and connecting businesses to be able to leverage it for corporate training. I, I love how you say it's your money. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> and I know it's taking it from Mike Coughlin, uh, not Coughlin, uh, uh, what was Corcoran. Mark, Mike Corcoran, yes. right. Uh, he was a guest on the show uh, several years ago, too. So how are you leveraging opportunities out there and connecting them with businesses like Health First so that they can provide corporate training uh, within their organizations? Uh, sure. Well, um, uh, a good example is how we did uh, work with uh, Julie. I'm now celebrating my third year, uh, my third year anniversary at uh, BCC is, is Labor Day weekend. Congratulations. And thank you. You're welcome. And that also, uh, also rolls into the 50th anniversary of uh, Bristol Community College, where we've been doing this type of work for a long time. Uh, the focus recently on the <coughs> Workforce Training Fund is really that that fund can really be a shot in the arm for a business that is looking to upgrade the skill of their uh, employees in a strategic way because those grants are always for a two-year period and we spend a lot of time up front really looking at the training needs with the company so we engage in a focus groups needs assessment to really understand what the the exact um, skills gaps are or training needs and all the training we do on site through that workforce training fund fund is customized so we don't bring anything off the shelf we really look at what the need is we design it around that need and uh, we bring in the the instructors to do that and that's pretty much the process we followed with uh, with Julie at Health First yeah, and I was going to ask Julie 
how did you become acquainted with Bristol Community College as a tool for workforce training and what what made you reach out to them? Um, we have several connections. Uh, the first connection was really um, through board member and former state senator Joan Minot, um, who obviously was we part know of her. the work. Yes, we yes. do. Um, and also, um, I'm proud to mention that um, Dean Carmen Aguilar is a current board member of Health First. And Rob and I kind of go way back, so we've known each other for a while. And um, so it's really through those great connections that um, Health First um, was able to take advantage of the funding. Um, and I have to say that I recommend it to all employers, regardless of the size of their business, um, whether it's one or a hundred or more, um, the benefits that are reaped um, really, you just can't put a dollar sign on them. So, what were the needs that were addressed? Well, it's, it had been a while since we had offered uh, any training of substance to our employees. So, obviously, in the service industry, mm -hmm. customer service training was up of utmost, utmost importance to so us. Utmost important to you in the medical industries? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that we're trying Absolutely. to get across here is yes. how universal customer service training is. It, it has to be. I mean, if you provide negative customer service in any way, I mean, I can't, I can't foresee a, a business lasting too long um, if they develop a, a, a reputation for poor customer service. Yes. Um, and so uh, that was of utmost importance. And also through this funding, um, this is how I would describe it. Um, and it was fun to see this on a, on a daily basis. People who normally would not work together were, were kind of mixed in the training groups. And so they got to uh, meet each other, perhaps for the first time. Um, and that was one of the things that they enjoyed most about the training. Um, I believe that the training empowered a lot of our employees as well. And I would say to most employers, if you think you know your employees, think again. Because through this process, I learned a lot about the people that work at, at Health First and what's important to them. Very interesting. Yes, it has been. We are going to take a quick break. We're going to uh, have a public service announcement and when we come back, I'd like to get into detail about some of the offerings mm -hmm. and specifically the issues that you were working to address and how they were addressed through corporate training. So please enjoy this public service announcement. We'll be right back on the other side. Do you know how often I hear people say, oh, I don't have time for it, you know, maybe tomorrow. I have no excuses right now to be lazy or to quit. And when people tell me that they don't have time, I just want to turn to them and be like, then you make time. Make time for what's important. No excuses. My name is Christina Lee, and this is my BCC story. Before BCC, I was a high school graduate. Um, I'm the first person in my family to go to college. I went off to University of Southern Mississippi. I kind of had a little too much fun and really not focused on school, nor was I, uh, I don't think my brain was responsible enough to be able to handle that. And being able to choose what I want to do for the rest of my life was a little intimidating. And I came back home to Massachusetts and I lived with my parents, had my son, and then I, I started working full time. And then BCC, I think I was actually driving and I saw a billboard that said, you know, you can earn your degree today. And I was like, well, I guess I could do that. I mean, why not, right? I truly believe in the saying, you know, you're gonna invest your time, you're gonna make time for things that you feel that is important. Like if it's important to you, you'll find a way. And if not, you'll find an excuse. And to me, being the best person possible, whether it's being a student or a mother or, or an employee, I think that's, those things are important. So I want to make the best of my experience here, and that's why I joined so many clubs and did so many things. I think that's why I actually love BCC so much, is because I've actually had a hand in 
sort of creating the whole reputation of what it is. And that is, you know, motivated students who really want to do better, make this community better, make this state better. So that's what I'm planning to do. I was actually the first person to be able to not only be a student senate member, but also have been elected to be the student trustee. And it was an interesting dynamic where I had, I was advocating for the students while also being able to see it from the trustee's side, being able to see like the sort of background of how everything works. And um, it was really good to be able to be that involved. And then I started this club called Pencils of Promise, which is a nonprofit organization that raises money to help underprivileged countries and helping them build a school, which I think is a phenomenal experience. And then I started PAC, Positivity and Kindness. And that's where we do a lot of the free hugs. and it, our mission statement has always been like, with very little efforts, you can make a difference through simple acts of kindness. I certainly want to make other people feel motivated. So I'm pretty proud to be a BCC alum now and to be able to say that I've done so much while I was there. School is the foundation of who you are. And if you let that go because you're, you can't balance, then you got to choose school over anything else. I decided to join the military um, in 2008 because I needed money to go to school. I think the National Guard has made me really think things through before saying them. And a lot of times you have to be able to just swallow your pride a little bit. Things aren't always going to go accordingly as much as we'd all like it to be. And that's just life. You know, sometimes life throws you curveballs. So you're just going to have to be able to hit it. It's really nice to have faculty members who are who would stand behind you and be able to keep encouraging you that this is this is good. You're doing good. This is fine. You know, you have to test yourself. You have to push yourself because if you really want something, you'll be able to do it. And juggling tough courses such as calculus and everything else in anatomy and then balancing the rest of um, all the things that I do I can't wait for one day to be able to look back on this whole educational experience through all of that, through all the stress, through all the late nights and the coffees and you know all, all that. I can't wait to just be able to look back and be like, and I started at BCC. That's the best part. BCC better watch out because I'm gonna come back and be like, look at what you guys created. This is all thanks to you. That was a very inspiring message that we just heard during the public service announcement. We were commenting about that uh, during the break. Speaking about inspiring, though, I want to get back to the conversation regarding workforce training. And uh, Rob Vitello, uh, we were talking prior to the break a, a little bit about what BCC does in helping businesses to develop programming. And I'd like you to discuss with the viewers how BCC specifically tailors their programs for the needs of a business like Health First. Sure, I, I can talk to that specific example and Julie can uh, t t chime in. Uh, one of the things that we were first struck by when we were talking to the staff at Health First was they had a beautiful new facility, their state of the art, a great investment there, um, and, but they were saying that they just expected everyone to just flood the doors and come right in. Beautiful facility. And, um, you know, that doesn't always happen. In this case, it didn't. So um, they were looking to, with, with people uh, having so many different uh, choices for health care uh, support, we were looking at, well, what is their immediate need? And so they're very good at what they do as far as providing health care services. Maybe what they weren't great at was marketing. So that was one of the things that we decided to focus on very first, because we really needed to try to get to increase their members, to increase their the vision, to try to, to focus on certain segments of the of the local population, especially the you know the 18 to 25 year olds who think they're invincible, mm -hmm. but they are ones you need to find a way to communicate with and have them establish a, a relationship with. So we were able to bring in our marketing specialist from um, BCC in the academic program 
to work specifically and outline a detail, a very thorough, um, you know, 52 hour program that went over a number of months uh, to really m build a team to look at what those marketing strategies could be, understand the, the, the dis different skills behind marketing. Um, and so that was one of the first uh, trainings we proposed doing and we included in the Workforce Training Fund grants with very measurable um, results, I mean goals about what, how they were going to increase the membership in certain areas, certain demographics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reduce the no-show rate. Um, we want to appeal to the 19 to 26 year olds. That was a fun course, um, and the training was provided by Shelley Murphy, yes, uh, BCC's marketing professor, um, who brought real-world experience into the classroom, and she was phenomenal. Sometimes, because we were so so excited to be at training and talking to one another, we'd kind of go off on our tangents. But she kind of reined us in again, and um, she's been great, and she continues to be a resource for us. Because even though Help First has had this proud mission of service for 44 years, um, I find this hard to believe still, but people still don't know about us. So we, we really have to take some steps to rebrand. We have to understand the importance of social media. Um, and so uh, we've learned a lot to help us get there, um, and we continue to learn. It's an interesting observation that you're making. I mean, I I'm CEO of an organization that's been around for over 100 years, and you constantly have to push your information out there. You Absolutely. constantly have to refresh yourself. Yes. Uh, and uh, be out there. Yes. In order for people to know what you do, and you can't assume anything. Boy, have we learned this. At that's the absolutely of correct. Right. How did you recognize that there was a need that needed to be addressed? Because that's that's the moment. And others, I think, could benefit by knowing that they might have a moment. Um, well, we were in the new facility, as Bob mentioned, and we felt like it was time that we really needed to make a change uh, because we did think that this, you know, um, twelve million dollar facility uh, was going to be the end all, cure all um, to recruiting new patients. Um, when that didn't happen, we uh, felt that we needed to take some different steps. Um, and uh, that's why, um, you know, I, I so appreciate Rob and Carmen and Joan uh, for helping us, probably giving us the uh, impetus we needed to start taking things in a different direction. It's very interesting. What were your concerns in implementing a, a training program? I did have some at first, I'll be honest with you. Um, this grant requires that we match uh, and then some, the grant award of $150,000, which covers the cost of the trainers. So that, mean, that means that the value of the time that our staff spends in the training is the match. And the match is actually more than the grant amount. It's close to $200,000. So all I could think about was, at first, was that, oh my God, we're gonna have all these people at training um, are we going to be able to operate efficiently still? Um, but it definitely worked out. Uh, Rob, and I have to say that Stephen Goulet um, in corporate services um, was a, a big help to us in planning the training sessions um, so that uh, minimal impact was placed on operations. And um, as I said, the staff was thrilled. If, if I just might add, I think uh, Julie's to be commended because these weren't just one half-day sessions. We were able to do 40 hours of training on effective communication uh, and another 40 hours um, uh, on a management training. So Julie opened up her management team. That was one of the second trainings yes. that we launched so that they had uh, not only, so they, they set an example that they were also going to training and that they were learning things, but that they were also, uh, so they were making the time. But it was really, uh, the focus of that was how to manage in a changing world. This is a very challenging uh, industry, and what is really the difference is having a skilled management leadership team. 
Um, so the importance of the Workforce Training Fund to me is that there's an opportunity to really hit all levels of the organization. And that's what Julie's been able to do with this grant because it's it had some of the, the key leadership uh, training components, the effective communication has dealt with all the, everyone in the organization went through that training, almost 100 people. Yes, that's true. Um, and, uh, and then the, the, we're, we're almost three quarters of the way through the grant, but the last big segment is something very interesting for the healthcare field. We're going to be teaching lean principles to the healthcare. So they're going to be learning tools and techniques to then improve their operations. Julie's saying one of the big challenges, the no-show rates. So when someone makes an appointment, um, it might be set kind of in the future, and then they, they, they don't come, even though you call them and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's a big inefficiency, as you could probably with a capital E. So we're looking, we're going to be launching uh, in the fall a, um, the last training, which is going to focus on this lean business process improvement, as we call it. And we're very excited about that. Yeah, I don't know much about it, but I'm looking forward to it. I just want to say something else, if I may. Uh, one of the goals of the grant was really to um, obviously provide the staff with resources that they needed. Uh, what we came to find was that throughout the trainings, there were a lot of employees who were true rock stars um, who really stuck out um, in the trainings. And um, as a result, I'm happy to say that uh, we, uh, rather than hire from the outside, we were able to promote uh, one of our employees. And uh, that always means a lot for me as the employer to recognize someone whose skill set has advance uh, to be able to um, recognize the strong work ethic, ethic um, and so we we're so happy to be able to do this. Yeah, I was going to ask you earlier in the show what mm -hmm. you need in order to advance uh, within a company. Well, it's training. Yeah, uh, abs it's always tra it's always going to be training. Um, I like people who actually take the initiative and like to take on new responsibilities. Those are the people that kind of shine. Um, I like people with a strong work ethic. Um, customer service skills is always going to be number one. Um, so I, I like people who provide compassionate care, whether it's at registration, whether it's in an exam room, whether it's on the phone. Um, and so uh, those are the people that kind of stand out to me. We're in our last minute. You got an event yeah. that's coming up. Yes, it goes we by do. fast. We do have a, an event coming yes. up. Thanks for mentioning it. Um, on Oxo October 17th, we have a three-mile walkathon planned, um, and that is nicely planned for uh, the fall season around the pond here at BCC. Oh, nice. And so we're very excited. Uh, we are looking for sponsors, and obviously people who are going to pledge to walk like a billion miles so that we can get a lot of uh, proceeds uh, from this event. Um, and people can check our website, healthfirstfr.org to find out more. And Rob, how do people get in touch with the Workforce Center over on well, the Wall Well, many Street? ways. We certainly are on the website. Uh, the direct line to, into our Workforce Center office is 774-357-4636. That's the, that's the easiest way, but we're very accessible. and we'll Accessible make through the web. Absolutely. Very good. Well, thank you for watching the Workforce Connection. Of course, we'll catch you next month with another episode addressing another issue impacting the area workforce.